A&W hosted Burgers to Beat MS Day across Canada today, and that's including here in Lloydminster. It's the last fundraiser of the summer for the MS Society, and it comes at a time full of optimism surrounding treatment of the disease. Josh Ryan has more in this week's Healthy Living. For those living with multiple sclerosis, seeing their community coming into A&W on Burgers to Beat MS Day was a wonderful sight. Everyone who buys a teen burger, we're just that much closer. Every $2 raised from a teen burger goes towards MS research, advocacy and services, which has helped Janelle Hutchinson manage her symptoms in recent years. Now I know what my symptoms are and I know how to handle them. And I know what makes for less relapses and I know what makes my body better. A number of those services have been critical in Lloydminster, including handy van and taxi services, which some need to commute to work. Other individuals use it for doctor's appointments and accessing MS activities. The fundraising of events like this are starting to pay dividends in treatment advancements. Right now I'm on a shot called Copaxone and I take it um, I take my shots three times a week and what it is is it's a protein it's supposed to help the, the uh, progression of MS so it's going to help from new lesions um, being developed or from your lesions getting bigger. There's also a drug called ocrelizumab that has been approved for relapsing remitting MS and potentially more. Soon hopefully a um, approval for progressive MS which is the first drug that they have out for progressive. And while waiting for that approval, Milnthorpe is already gearing up for the fall events and next year's 20th anniversary of the MS Walk. I've got all kinds of wonderful people that are going to be giving me wonderful ideas and, and uh, lots of sharing going on. We're going to make it bigger and better than ever. Josh Ryan. New Cap News. With the first round of NAFTA talks in the books, President Trump was on the stump this week threatening to walk away. In this week's agriculture report, Gerard Lampau finds out from Alberta's Ag Minister about softwood lumber and what happens if NAFTA goes south. In Alberta, we've had the opportunity to hire Gary Dewar, uh, for, former ambassador to the United States, to, to help us with that file as well. So, so it's a little early to tell yet, you know, where we're going to land. I know the signaling from the Americans is that they want an early agreement. They want to sign, or sign, uh, you know, fairly, or fairly soon, which, which is fine. We'll be, we'll be good with that. But making sure that there's nothing, we lose nothing. The worst case scenario could be on the tables in all of these negotiations. And why I say that is the relationship between Canada and the United States has been for the most part quite friendly. But there are aspects of that history that raise a number of questions. One of them in particular in terms of things that we have here in Canada. Now, I'm going to a really big one, 1959, a plane called the Avro Arrow that we had in Canada. And for some reason, I think we had made five of them and we were about to make the sixth. And for some reason, the program was scrapped. The insider talk is that it was because of the Americans, but a lot of the talent in our scientists went south. I think that's a, a really interesting a, re, a, a comparison, I think, looking at what happened maybe back in the back in the 50s. You know, important to remember that Canada and the United States uh, have the mo have the longest undefended border in in the, in the world. So that's how close of friends we are. We have a border that's the longest and undefended. Uh, it is interesting that some of the current policies of the federal government, of the United States, has has perhaps given us an opportunity for a lot of those scientists and technicians uh, to find, to look for perhaps a new home to where to set up business. So I think we have, a, we have an opportunity there, maybe even a responsibility to, to some of these people, these, these high, highly skilled uh, scientists and technicians to, to operate perhaps in Canada if they don't feel so welcome in the United States. Round two of NAFTA talks kick off in Mexico City September 1st. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. This is New Cap Sports. For all the fun and excitement chuck wagon racing brings, there's a side of it not many people outside the barns know about. That side is financial. The cost to feed and move horses is astronomical, not to mention the many other expenses incurred racing. But who pays for these expenses? Lance Phillips finds out. Quite figured it out. <laughs> Fans at the CPCA finals witnessed a brand new Ram truck given away to the championship driver. An expensive grand prize, no doubt, but prizes like that aren't possible without sponsors. 
I think it's been great for us. We've gotten a lot of exposure, and you know, and now that I've been here, what a great event to meet all these people, and 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 the fans were exceptional. But those people, the, the riders and their their teams are awesome people. I've had a, I've had a lot of fun. It's been great. Yeah, it's been for what we put into it, for what we get out of it, and then ultimately getting a friend out of it. It's been awesome for the kids, like my kids and and my partner's kids. It's, it's been really good. The gratitude drivers have for their sponsors is unequaled, and ironically, sponsors feel the same way towards their drivers. Getting a guy like Wayne Knight, who's such a veteran of the sport, has really opened our eyes to what the whole chuck wagon events are about. You know, you get to have the kids down to see the horses, you have family down, clients down. It's just a, it's a nice peaceful atmosphere for everybody to be around. Without them, man, you, you can't go down the road. Like, like I say, 10000 a month and, you know, the horses, and that's minimal. Like, I mean, that's, you're cutting costs all the time for that kind of thing. But just how do the names on the tarps benefit? Well, it definitely gets your name out. I mean, a night like tonight when, you know, Wayne comes in there and he wins from A all the way to Z, you know, it's, it's something you really shoot for when you're a sponsor. It you know, couldn't help you any better than that. The pancake breakfast, we must have had, I think we had three or four people, oh, actually the, the drivers looking at pickups, you know, hey, how much is that one, how much is that one? And, and with the exposure, we've had a lot of people, we did some special CPCA pricing, and it's been good. We've actually sold some vehicles off of it, which isn't, you know, that's why you do it, but it isn't, you know, it isn't always why you do it, but you, we're looking for that, uh, that spinoff, right? Everybody knows it, everybody hears it, especially when you start talking to your friends and all your business partners and getting them out here and bringing them out, then they finally get to know they get to see Chucks just like I did. And once these sponsors get a first taste of Chucks, it keeps them coming back for more. Absolutely. Yeah. We won't give this up. We used to do a couple sponsorships and we got rid of it for this. Just because, like I said, he's a family friend now. Absolutely. I've already signed on for at least three years, so next year it'll be bigger and better. And those words are a delight to not only drivers, but their hungry horses too. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloyd Mitchell.